Starting a realistic Manchester United career mode save with Ruben Amram as the manager brings an exciting tactical shift to Old Trafford. Known for his innovative 3-4-2-1 formation and emphasis on fluid attacking football, with United's current squad the career mode promises to be a thrilling challenge, as Amram's tactics could unlock the potential of key players whilst addressing the weaknesses of the side. So there are several changes that need to be made in order to align it with a realistic Ruben Amram Manchester United career mode, starting off with the formation. Of course, with Ten Hag, United played in a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 system. Changing the formation to a 3-4-2-1 will more or less align it with how Manchester United played versus Ipswich and how they will continue to play under their new manager. That also means that there will be players in the team that will have positional changes. Starting off with the positional change for Luke Shaw, now I think that he will be mainly played as a left-sided centre-back. So changing him to that centre-back role could be beneficial for him, but in terms of the realistic aspects of it, Luke Shaw has had a lot of lower body injuries and that's down to the amount of running that he does in games. Whereas being deployed as a left-sided centre-back, yes, there will still be a certain amount of running required, but he won't have to do it nearly as much. And I think that's in terms of Luke Shaw prolonging his career, that might be the best position for him. Now, don't get me wrong, I also think that Ruben Amaro might deploy him as a left wing back in certain situations, in certain games. That might require him to use his technical quality higher up the pitch. So we might be seeing Luke Shaw in these two positions going forward. As for the other two left backs in the squad, Tyro Malassia as well as Harry Amass, I would convert them both into left midfielders as I think that they have the qualities to bomb up and down the left hand flank and supply attacking opportunities into the box for the strikers. Onto the opposite flank and the likes of Diego Dallo as well as Nusa Masrawi should be converted into right midfielders. Now I do suspect that we will be seeing them as well playing multiple different positions. You might see Masrawi playing in the back line like he did versus Ipswich, you might be seeing him played on the left hand side just like we saw with Diego Dallo. So converting them into wide midfielders will definitely aid with having them settle into the formation, the 3-4-2-1 formation, but then also maybe trying to convert them into another position, maybe a central midfielder, maybe a centre back, could also help with creating those realistic parameters. The current structure of the Manchester United squad is set up to play a 4-2-3-1 system, having two defensive midfielders in those deeper areas of the midfield and allowing them to progress the ball further forward. Now we know that in Ruben Aram's 3-4-2-1, he more or less requires box-to-box -box midfielders, so converting the likes of Casemiro, Ugarte, Collier and May all into central midfielders will help them fit into Ruben Amram's 3-4-2-1 system. Now specifically speaking for Marcus Rashford, incorporating both the number 10 as well as the number 9 positions will be beneficial for him and incorporating him into Amram's plans. As we have seen the manager say in his press conference that he can play in those front three positions. A player like Garnacho is a bit of a tricky one as many people suspected that he would be deployed out wide as that left wing back option potentially. But in the game versus Ipswich we saw him being deployed just in behind the striker. Now I do think that there will be a mix and an alternate between the two positions for him. So incorporating the attacking midfielder role as well as maintaining the left and the right midfielder positions could be beneficial to really seeing how Garnacho fits into the Manchester United squad. Now Mason Mount will also require a role change, converting him from a central midfielder to a number 10, allowing him to successfully play just in behind the striker. Now even though I have said that, I do suspect that we will see Amram be very flexible with the positioning of certain players, Mason Mount being one of them, Bruno Fernandes being another, allowing him to play just in behind the striker or potentially being able to drop them back and allow them to play in that double pivot role. For the likes of Ahmad Diallo, he will require two new things, a new contract to start off with, as he is one of Manchester United's key priorities going forward, securing the long-term future of the right midfielder. But speaking of right midfielder, he also would require a position change. Now versus Ipswich, he was deployed as that right wing back role, looking to track back and help out. But as I've already mentioned, if you look at sporting and how Ruben Amram deployed certain players in that team, at times you would see specific players being able to play in the number 10 role for one game and as a wing back for the other. So I do suspect that Ahmad as well as Garnacho will be utilized in a very similar manner. And the last position change will be the likes of Joshua Xerxes. Now of course deployed as a striker up front for Eric Ten Hag and he hasn't really been able to find his form of course scoring that goal versus Fulham that helped Manchester United win the game. But we saw in the game versus Ipswich and I am referring to Ipswich a lot because that is like the the only thing I can look at with Ruben Amram and Manchester United, but we saw that he subbed on both Hoyland and Xerxes, and Xerxes was deployed just in behind the striker role. Now, I do think that we will be seeing Xerxes playing in those roles, very similar to what Marcus Rashford could provide for the side, allowing him to alternate between the number 9 and the number 10 role. The 9.5, potentially, he might have been onto something when he first came to, to United and did his first press conference, but I do think that the cam as well as the striker position best suits Joshua Xerxes going forward. In terms of the contract situations, there are several players in the club that are in the final few months of their deals. 
Tom Heaton, Erickson, Maguire, Gore, Evans, Lindelof, and of course Hamad, which we have spoken about, and he does deserve a new contract. Another player that I think should get a new contract should be the likes of Dan Gore, as he is a young prospect that is still developing, and I think that he might be able to provide something at a later date at least for this new Manchester United. Now a shock contract extension is the likes of Harry Maguire. If you think logistically about everything, you might have a few centre backs leaving, you might be looking to bring in new centre backs, but you can't send three centre backs out for free and then bring in three new centre backs. Financially, it just doesn't work out. So I do think that one of Harry Maguire or the likes of Victor Lindelof could be getting a further year or two years added onto their deals. Now, I think that the likes of Harry Maguire better suits what Manchester United are trying to do with this back three system. So I suspect that he would be the player to receive the contract extension. Whereas the rest of these players like Ericsson, Lindelof, Evans potentially, as well as Tom Heaton, they could be out the door in the summer, leaving for freeze or looking to retire in Evans's case. Over the past week or so, we've also seen reports come out that Ericsson as well as Lindelof are potentially going to be leaving the club. So that is why I wouldn't extend them and let them leave for free. Transfers are crucial to building a squad that fits Amarim's vision, and there have been a few players recently linked with moves to United that could definitely do this. Starting off with Jared Branthwaite, a player that was linked with United in the summer, but for the price tag that Everton were offering, United ended up walking away. A player that is now in the final seven months of his deal does mean that Manchester United do have the upper hand in order to go and get him from Everton. Now, I do suspect that he will sign a contract extension for a further year, and United will still have to pay a certain fee, maybe 30 or 40 million. But he could definitely be a player that can play across the entire back three in any of the roles that Amarim would also give him, whether that's a ball playing sense back, a defender, a, an aggressive stopper potentially, he could definitely fulfill the role and maybe even replace Martinez as that left-sided center back. A key area that does need targeting is the left back role or the left wing back position. Now, Alfonso Davies has been linked with a move to United in the summer as a free transfer, which would absolutely be incredible. He is also another player in the final seven months of his deal. So in the, the January window, if he hasn't signed anything with Bayern, you could definitely go in and negotiate a free contract. A few other left backs that have been linked with a move to the Red Devils has been Milos Kerkes from Bournemouth, Aysen Nori, which I really do like from Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think he's a, an incredible left wing back, left back option for the side going forward. Anthony Robinson, which would also not be a bad option either. And then, of course, we've got a former United prospect, Alvaro Fernandez or Alvaro Carreras. I think that's how you go. That's how you say it. He could be making his way back. United have got like a 15 million pound or euro release clause that they can look to trigger and bring him back to the club. And he could also definitely fit in down that left hand side. Centrally is one key area that Ruben Amram and Manchester United will be looking to target together. Chris Rigg from Sunderland being the outstanding talent in the championship so far this season at only 17 years old he is touted to be the next big thing and he has got a lot of admirers at old trafford so he could be making his way to the club either in the january window or possibly in the summer and it would probably be for a lot of money so we'd have to have a bit more patience as he is the prospect that would need a bit more time to grow and develop in the new surroundings but we've also got edison here who's 25 who's ready to make that next step in his career and with ericsson leaving for free and possibly also casemiro leaving in the summer we could see both of these players being replaced by Chris Rigg as well as Edison, two players that can be box-to-box -box midfielders and add a lot of physicality into those central midfield areas. And then the last position that the United board are trying to strengthen is the number 10 role. Naipan and Nkunku have been linked with moves to Manchester. Now, I do think that Nkunku's move is a bit more far-fetched as he isn't getting the game time required and that might change down the line, but I'd see him as a key figure for Chelsea and Enzo Maresca, so I don't really see that move happening, but if it does, I'll be very, very excited. However, Naipan has been linked with a move to Old Trafford since last summer, so we have seen that there is some interest there, and I do suspect that in the December month, when he is traveling and visiting the various different clubs that he might be interested in, I do suspect that Manchester United and Dan Ashworth and all those characters will definitely try and lure him to Old Trafford come the January window. And last but not least, we will talk about the Youth Academy, which has always been a prominent feature to Manchester United. Whether it's Sir Matt Busby days, Sir Alex Ferguson days, Louis van Hull, Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, until present day Eric Ten Hag and now Ruben Amram. So making sure that the Youth Academy always has flourishing talents, players that are ready to come through and make sure that they can produce for the club is the number one priority. And I'm just looking right here. There's a kid called Mason Best, maybe a relative of George Best, who's come through. He's 17. He's a right back. So you're letting your, your great granddaddy down? Anyways, it doesn't matter. He's got 94 potential. Making sure that players like this have the opportunity to flourish in the first team is the number one priority. 
I mean, Manchester United over the last few years, since Van Hull, really, because he was the one that really came in and laid down the foundations of restructuring the youth academy side. Over the last 10 years, we've been able to produce really, really high quality talents. They haven't always been able to show it, but in recent memory, Garnacho, as well as Kobe Mainu in the first team. Scott McTominay, yes, a lot of fans didn't really like him, but he was also able to find a way and a path into the first team. And was a common denominator for a lot of different managers, whether it's Ralf Raniak, whether it's Jose Mourinho, all the way through Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and eventually Eric Ten Hag. But making sure that there, there are those sort of players in and around the first team, Marcus Rashford as well, let's not forget him. So you need to consistently be looking to scout young talents that can come through. And I mean, let's be honest with the way that Ineos are moving, consistently signing young talents like Chida Obi Martins from um, Arsenal and so on. That, that is a way of, of going about it. So with Manchester United, having the best of the best is the minimum. So potentially improving the scout at a later stage to five star, five star would be the best way to go about it. But nonetheless, looking to scout in Europe is the, the number one area, Northern Europe, and then looking for England and then nine months. So you are going to try and, you know, find some players from the, the surroundings where obviously Manchester is. I'm looking for the next best thing, looking for another Kobe Mainu. Let's look for positions that we might actually need. Left midfielders, right midfielders, and central midfielders. And let's go with a center back as well. For the midfielders, I want them to be wide midfield. Okay, yeah, wide midfielders, deep line playmaker. And for the center back, ball playing. I think those three features fit Amram's style of play. And you can do the same for the other two. Maybe scouting in Brazil. I know that a few years ago, United started setting up scouting links or scouting areas in South America, that could be Brazil, that could be Argentina, Chile, Colombia, anywhere in South America, looking to find talents there, as well as looking to find talents in Africa, whether that's Southern Africa, Northern Africa, Central Africa, looking for the next best thing. I mean, we recently signed a kid, Kone, from I'm not sure which country in Africa, but we have recently signed him and he's touted to be like the next best thing. He is levels above any other 16 year old out there in terms of the, the central defensive midfield position. So looking for players like that, that can eventually come in in three, four years time to help strengthen the squad, could definitely be the way to go. And last but not least is the manager himself. Now, of course, the Ruben Amram in the game is horrendous. He has hair glitches where he, he's got long hair one moment, short hair the next moment, he's bald, he's got dreads. It's crazy. So going and making your own is the best way to do it. Now, I have found a YouTuber that's gone and made a pretty damn good looking Ruben Amram and I will put his link in the description if you guys are interested in doing the same it's a seven minute video it's really short but it's really really good so if you are interested in not having a ponytail on Ruben Amram in your press conferences then go ahead and try and make this one as well it is really really good at least until you know EA decides to put the real Amram in the game but until then, I mean, this one is pretty damn good. So check that out in the description. And there we go, people. That is how I would go ahead and replicate a realistic start to a Ruben Amram Manchester United career mode save in FC25. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you don't mind, smash that like button down below, please. That would be fan fantastic. And it would be appreciated by yours truly. Anyways, until the next time, until the next one, I hope you have a smashing goddamn day. And I'm out of here. Peace. Okay.